Hi folks, welcome back to Aussie Garage. Okay, just a catch up really, uh, 13 days in a row, shift after shift after shift, first day off. So, done a few bits and bobs this morning, got caught up with all the chores, done the washing, sorted out everything at the house, now it's time to play back on the project toe hitch. Now, uh, yeah, I remember these, um, we webbed them last time, got a good solid web in there for strength, and I've been looking at trailers. In the last two weeks since I've been working solid, been watching eBay, and do you know what, I cannot buy a trailer for love nor money. This is a rat bike, so the trailer is going to be uh, turned into a rat trailer. And effectively, I can't buy what I need. Yeah, I can go out and spend two or three hundred pounds on a trailer, but that's a pointless waste of time. Yeah, I can build a trailer, but that will cost me two or three hundred pounds because all the new parts cost that. So you think the easy way, buy a raggedy trailer, break it up, and turn it into a rat trailer. And that's what I've been chasing. Now, three trailers now, and it's not being able to bid on eBay. A couple of you gave me some great suggestions on bid catchers, little... IT things you can use to make sure you get the bid at the last minute, doesn't work, can't do it. It's not about that, it's how much I want to pay. I put in the maximum bid, I see a raggedy trailer made out of plywood and rusty metal that's been around for a hundred years and you think it's worth about £50, £60 or so on, ends up going for 150 And then a perfect trailer came up, it was like a little box, like a little baby caravan, absolutely perfect, £250. I can't pay that for it, it's a rat bike. So trying to find it, that's been the problem. But at the moment, I've decided rather than trying to buy the trailer and set the hitch to the right size and the right height, I'm just going to get this thing tacked up. Um, and I'm going to set the ball hitch or the, the, the bracket for the ball hitch, which will be these two things, one above the other. They're going to be basically set at the height of the tow bar on the van. So that's about 11 inches at the bolt points. Um, you can't weld them on because the tow ball itself is cast steel and very, very thick and it's been welded to mild, thin sheet box sections, so that welding would be incompatible and it wouldn't be strong enough. Also, heating the ball hitch up till it glows orange, cast metal, it's a recipe for making it brittle. So they're going to be bolted through, perhaps a few tacks or something, I don't know, whatever. But in the future, for now, it's a case of getting this framework bolted on the bike and getting it set at the right height, getting it set straight and square and tacking it in place to see if we can make it look like a frame. The first job has been to buy myself some decent drill bits. So I've got some decent drill bits now. We're going to get this drilled out to 8mm because I've been using 6mm up until now with little 6mm bolts and they're rubbish, they're not thick enough. So it's a case of raking through the big bolt box of doom, getting this thing set in place. So let's drill those holes out, let's drill out the holes in the in the spars and then bolt it on the bike, rake through, find some bolts, get it bolted on and try and set this up in a frame. Stick around, stay tuned. Okay, first thing, eight mil holes. Now, um, the reason for going eight mil, obviously it's a tow bar. Obviously it's important that it's strong enough. So, let's get these lobbed out eight mil first. They're six mil at the minute, so it's only basically shouldering out the extra two mil. So there we go. Just using a power drill from my mate Rob in Canada. He likes to see power tools rather than man's tools, which you use with your hands. Just put in a dab of grease in the hole because these are stainless and anyone who ever cut stainless or drilled stainless before knows it does like to catch hold of the drill. Now I've used these stainless, I welded these heavyweight stainless tabs on there because they're going to be strong for the job. But the downsize is, as you can see, jobs like this, it eats drill bits, sticks bits of metal in your face, all kinds of fun things. So, to show you one more time, as you can see, a little dab of your favourite grease. Just feed it into the hole 
so that as the drill bit goes through the hole it picks up new grease. As you can see the smoke there is it just melting off. Uh, ordinary mild steel, a drill bit just cuts straight through it, it's not a problem. But drilling stainless normally requires specialist drills or very very high quality drills. But in this instance I ain't got none. So I'm using these. Right, let's try and get through these without getting any metal in my face. Honestly, without the grease, you're laughing at because I look a dick in my glasses. Well, I'd rather have these on than have bits of work, bits of mire and swarf in my eel bits. Right, without the grease, this would just overheat, and once it overheats, it burns the end of the drill, goes blunt, and you ain't going nowhere. Last one. I reckon those, those eight holes. <laughs> Missy Pitstop Camera Girl at this point is holding. He got smoking drill. Smoking drill, look at that baby. <laughs> Do a boy's garage, the place where it happens. Sure. <laughs> Daft as a brush. Okay. Now, the next thing's about the bolts we're going to use. I just want a couple of Dill Boys tips uh, from Dill Boys Garage today, and uh, they're engineering based tips. Um, quite important stuff if you're going to be bolting a heavy object on the back of your bike. If you make a mistake and your trailer comes free and heads backwards down the motorway behind you, someone's going to run over it and get hurt and that's a claim all on you and I would imagine your insurance company probably wouldn't really want to know. Um, that's even if they know you've got a trailer. So the point is to get it so it doesn't fall off and I want to talk about the bolts we use. There's a reason why we use certain bolts and not certain others. Um, first of all, you see on some bolts, you'll see this shank part, which has got no thread on it, and other bolts have got thread all the way up to the hill. So there is a difference, and there is a reason why. These bolts are used for bolting things together, like a cylinder head that has to stay together, whereas these bolts with a shaft are used for bolting things that shear apart. Imagine a brake caliper. When you wind the brakes on, that caliper tries to rotate round the wheel. So the caliper is always trying to do this. And if you take a look at a caliper bolt, you will guarantee it's got a shaft or a shank, a piece of unthreaded shank. And there's a reason for that, and I'll explain it very quickly why. This is the end old bit here, and that's the part it's going through. Now if you imagine you've got the, the bracket on the bike is gonna go there, and that means that a piece of unthreaded shank is through the two parts and when this thing here is being pulled backwards by the weight of the trailer it's bearing on a solid piece of unthreaded steel if that was threaded right the way up to the end it would be resting on just the tips that makes sense the tips of the thread come in close I'll show you Penny. see the tips of the thread are all that this is bearing against they aren't as strong as a solid piece of shank. So when you're bearing on these tips, it will crush them, they will deform. Once they crush and deform, effectively there'll be a gap and it will waggle about and that's when you get propensity for your item, whatever it is, to come loose and fall off. So when an item on the vehicle has to have shear strength, shear strength being the resistance against shearing that way, against the one item sliding off the face of the other. So this, sliding backwards then it has to have it has to bear against a piece of unthreaded shank that is extremely important it's almost like an engineering law that has to be so right also you don't want too much bolt hanging out so coming on these what i've done i've done three already uh, these little bolts are cut to length so that they go through the bracket on the bike through there there's the bracket going to give me that much. You might hear engineers talk about a full nut. Uh, that's nothing to do with a complete idiot. A full nut is effectively getting the whole nut fully on the thread with a little bit of the thread sticking out the end. If you've got the nut on but there's a bit of the nut hanging off the end, you haven't got a full nut and that'll unwind itself and fall off because the lock is the nylon bit in the end and you need that to go on the thread. 
So you need one and a half times at least the width of the nut. So I've got to cut these down bolts when I got them out of the box. They're way too long. So that's tip number one. Always on a sheer strength requirement, use a shafted bolt or a shanked bolt. You'll find this on engine casings a lot as well so that they don't waggle about and crush the thread. So I'm going to cut these down. I've done these with my old favourite hacksaw. I'm going to do one more and show you a little trick. Okay, cutting a bolt down, pretty simple, straightforward thing, but I'll show you a little trick. The old boy's tip number 64. What you do, pop a nut, an old nut, that you don't need, or a spare one, in the vise. And lock it in position, nice and firmly. I give that a good wind in there. And simply take a hacksaw and through one of the flat sides, just split that nut, cut it down there through. Make it steady. Okay, once that's split, you've then effectively split that nut and then we put it on the bolt and wind it on. Now we wind it on as far down as it needs to go, right down to the end. Okay, now the fact that we've split it means that when I now put that in the vise, it will crush. I can wind that in there real tight. And this nut, because it's got a gap in it, will crush around the thread, but it won't crush the thread because it's a matching nut. So, I must put a nut on the end of that. So I can now get my hacksaw again, and I can cut the end of this off, holding that completely still. Okay, when you cut it off and it starts to bend, You've still got a little tab of metal, so just bring the hacksaw around like that, twist it into that tab, and with no weight on it, just cut against it, and you get a nice clean edge without a big spigot stuck out the end. So just move it out the end of the vise, and then give a file, clean off the burr. You can do this with a grinder, or on a grinder, but I believe everything that can be done on a hand tool can also be done on a grinder or vice versa. Right, now obviously in cutting that through, what we've done is naff up that last thread so it won't do up. The easiest way around that is we get the nut back in there, give it a little pinch in the vise, and then unscrew it. Now as you unscrew, you're dragging that thread backwards through a slightly tighter thread than it needs to be. And if you go backwards and forwards like that, you clean up the thread that you've just naffed up on its way out. So thus returning the bolt back to a nice usable condition. And then you can chuck the old split nut in the bin or in your bolt box ready to use another day. And there we are, and that's our bolt. Just by hand, just take the last little burrs off that have, but take them off that way, not downwards, because then you'll disturb down into the thread. So that's why we use a shanked nut. And that's also why you put a split nut on when you want to cut a bolt down. So put that on there, and that in there, job done. Right, now we can bolt the lock on the bike. See what it looks like. Okay, offside rear.
washer on the outside. Now you can already see that there, that tab is a little bit off the way it got welded on and warped. I didn't put them on a jig or anything, they're just welded on. So what I shall do is just bend that metal tab out a little bit like that, just so that they line up. Okay, right, there it is, all now bolted in place. The initial bolts at the top little six mil things gave me loads of waggle about but now that they're in place I was a bit concerned that the tabs might be off slightly but they're not they're actually quite straight when we stand and look at it from behind and my mate Robin Canada is already saying wheelie bars mate they're wheelie bars they are so wheelie bars but they're going to get locked off here as soon as I've welded this this will then form the back of the frame this is just extra um, because obviously just gives me the ability to move it about. So that's at the moment where they're gonna sit and that is the face to which I'm gonna bolt the actual ball hitch. So I need to measure, obviously it's on the stand at the minute, so I'm gonna have to use Missy Pit Stop Camera Girl to get a tape measure on it. But first I need to measure what height it's gonna be. Tape measure, here it is. Right, so what I'm gonna do is go out to the old van of doom and Check what kind of height it stands at. I think it's about 11 inches. And tow bar. So that in the center, right, that's 12. So that's where the bolt behind is. So that's the point through which it's going to bolt. And that sits at literally. All right, that's 12 inches. So the bolt points are 12 inches off the ground, which is the same for the van, or the correct for the van. So I reckon getting that there, 12 inches off the ground, when I'm sat on the bike. Obviously, no use when I'm not sat on it. So next thing, get it measured. Okay, just tacking it now so that it's in one piece. And then I can cut these back sections off and then it is effectively one frame. And then I've just got to make up some brace pieces. So let's get this tacked on. Right, anybody listening on headphones, turn them down now. Everybody should have a diamond disc in their life. Who loves a diamond disc? Right.
disc. Right. So there we go, that's just about it. Um, all I've got to do now, now it's all in one frame, it's only tacked at the back. Um, this is quite heavily tacked obviously, but not too much that they can't be bent, it's not permanently welded. What I've got to do is use these cut off tubes um, to make spires. Now, obviously a cross brace across there will hit the tire, so I've got to work on that kind of affair, something that's going to cross over the back without hitting the tyre. I didn't want this any further back because that will cause problems with it being too far from the bike. It's got to be towed as close as possible, so we'll work this out. Also, it really is quite strong. There really isn't much movement in it. The whole thing is slightly flexible, but there's no side-to-side -side movement. All the brackets are extremely heavily bolted on. And that, if you actually think about looking at this, this is the, the same principle as a tail unit itself. The back seat rails here is a rail there, a rail there, coming back, and that whole back section, it does have a bit of movement to it, but it, it flexes and therefore it doesn't crack. So this is the same thing. It needs a little bit of flex. All these brackets are extremely strong. We saw earlier they're all heavyweight stainless, proper bolts in them now with shanked or shouldered bolts at the top, all solid. That really isn't going anywhere, but what I do want to do is cut um, quickly little short ones like this notch the ends out and effectively put them in here as braces so all of that's to come really that's the next section now it's in one piece it's strong it ain't going anywhere as you can see there's no way that's going to have a problem pulling that 150 kilo bike backwards with it there's no flex whatsoever completely strong so that's that job done that's all for today Thanks for tuning in and watching the Always Garage. I'm going to get making some spars, and some brace pieces, perhaps I'll use some more webbing. Don't know, I'm going to have a little think about the next section. Perhaps welding in some mesh in the sides to kind of box it in with mesh so it looks a little bit more Mad Max. That's all pretty cool. But that's all for the future. That's all for today. It's this. It's in one piece at long last. I've now got to go and get a ball hitch. It's at the correct height. That's from the Garage. Ride safe. See you next time.